So the Air Combat Evolution program is trying to develop trusted, scalable, human-level AI-driven autonomy for air combat. The Alpha Dogfight trials really enabled us to see the potential of this particular uh, approach to taking artificial intelligence and moving it into the cockpit and ultimately moving it into a live cockpit where the human beings are able to kind of shape that and, and gain trust in it as it goes along the way. Uh, we uh, saw the compelling need to continue to push the technology forward and really into these more collaborative uh, environments where human-machine symbiosis is really going to be tested um, and, and pushed to its limit, right? Uh, especially with regard to trust and uh, that that trust measurement and trust assessment of the human pilots. And so halfway through phase one of the program, we um, began our uh, series of three scrimmages. In scrimmage number one, we have two aircraft working together to prosecute an adversary with everyone having two weapons, two discriminating weapons, one with a, a rather precise, uh, shorter range weapon in the gun and a longer range, um, less discriminatory weapon in the missile. And this really introduces a lot of dynamics that we were unable to push and explore in the Alpha Dogfight trials. But it, what it allows us to do is look for clear of no fire, as well as the complexity of uh, maneuvering two aircraft in relation to an adversary. In order to make the program real, um, we need to fly it in a real airplane. And uh, none of the aircraft right now are really ready for an artificial intelligence algorithm to essentially come on board and help control it. And so the first aircraft that we are modifying is an L-39. It's a che Czechoslovakian trainer that is uh, rather widely used in the civilian sector. It's uh, pretty uh, reliable aircraft. It flies a lot. There are several of them out there. And it, it serves as a nice test bed for us to go in and modify. In order to do that, we have to uh, calculate a bunch of things that are associated with just how the aircraft behaves so that we have an accurate performance model that the AI algorithm can uh, essentially used to make predictions and make decisions on maneuvers and that sort of thing. And so right now what we are doing is uh, developing that aero model, that, that model of the aircraft itself. Um, and once we get that complete, we'll begin actually modifying the aircraft to uh, have the uh, algorithm be able to actually take control of the vehicle. Scrimmage number one gave us an opportunity to start to see what the um, trust assessment will actually look like. How will we measure um, the pilot's uh, physiology in order to glean information of whether they're actually um, trusting in the, the autonomy that's on board. And what we've done is done a little bit of uh, initial trials uh, where we have uh, taken a what we call the meet servo actuator mode for uh, the autonomy, um, so the artificial intelligence is not able to grab on to the flight controls, but we can give a director, a flight director, to a surrogate pilot who is now going to actuate the flight controls as, as directed. And the evaluator pilot now can fly in that, in that aircraft as if the, uh, the aircraft were being controlled by an artificial intelligence algorithm. We kind of started looking at some of, the, some of the measurement techniques to see where their head is pointing as well as where their eyes are looking around the cockpit itself in order to enable us to see where, how much is the pilot actually checking the autonomy um, by looking outside the window and comparing that to how often, how much time they spend in their battle management task. At the end of calendar year 21, uh, so at the end of this year, we're gonna move into our subscale phase where we are gonna transfer a lot of our software from this uh, simulation environment into the subscale vehicles and verify that they manage that sim to real transition, which is rather critical for um, most AI algorithms. And in fact, that's where we've shown AI algorithms have tended to uh, break down break, break down in the past or show that they can be uh, rather brittle or fragile to that transition. So we're going to do that transition at the end of this year, um, beginning of next year. Um, and then that lays really a lot of the groundwork for our live full-scale testing in 2023 and 2024.